All right, welcome back. And in this lecture, we're going to kind of explore how horses have made such an impact on us. And, and in this slide, it's one of my favorite cave drawings, you know, obviously, because I, I have such a passion for horses. And this is from the Chevette Cave in, in France. And if you've never seen it, I, you, know, you can go online and they have a really neat, um, really neat section on all the, the cave artwork that they've found. And, you know, it dates back thousands and thousands of years. So, you know, horses obviously have played a huge role in, in, in my promo video, and I'll say it again and again and again, horses are, are man's true best friend. I love dogs. Dogs are awesome. You know, there's nothing like a, a dog wet kiss, right? But horses have been with us every step of the way as we have evolved and explored this planet, and as we have grown, horses have been critical in each stage of, you know, each major stage of our development in the last few thousand years. Now, early on, horses were hunted for food. So, you know, the, it was just another animal that early man was hunting the, these, uh, these animals. And it's important to remember that horse meat is still eaten, you know, many parts of the world today. So, you know, in, in Mexico, Japan, Europe, other countries, you know, it, it, it is part of their diet. And we, we have to respect that, you know, even though here in the United States, we, we don't eat horses. Now, this picture, you may say, why is this important? And, and I just kind of threw it up there to show you, you know, science and the, the cool thing about science, but also, you know, how we've been able through DNA evidence, been able to trace the migratory route of humans. And you can see we all go back to common ancestors in Eastern Africa. And, you know, men and women have, have migrated into Europe, migrated across Asia, came down into the Americas to where the South American Indians are actually the most divergent through genetics um, from our most common ancestor. And I put this up here because this is how we're really unlocking a lot of mysteries in, in a lot of species through DNA evidence. And people are actually looking at this now currently in horses to kind of figure out, you know, where these horses were domesticated because nobody really knows. We don't have firm, firm evidence, but maybe through some DNA, you know, DNA testing and, and we can start developing a, a more clearer picture of where this happened. So, you know, I'm just going to cover three main areas where people think horses might have first, you know, been domesticated over 6,000 years ago. And the first one is in, in modern day Ukraine, there is some evidence that possibly horses were, were for, first roped and, and, you know, somebody jumped on the back of them and thought, wow, this is fun or this is really great, you know, let's do this. Uh, some more. So that's one area of, that people think it might be. And then there's some evidence that it might have been in China or Mongolia around the same time period. You know, possibly this is where horses were. And then this paper from Le, uh, Levine that came out in the, the Equine Vet Journal, he proposes the best evidence is actually in northern Kazakhstan, you know, looking at some of the old bones of the horses that they found, looking at the male female ratios. You know, he, he was saying in his, in his article that it was a one-to-one -one ratio where in some of these other pastoral societies, you know, when they were hunting horses, you know, you would find, you know, mainly younger horses or more females and less males because, you know, that's how horses naturally are, you know, one male to a few females and they're banned. So it was an interesting paper and, and, and really some, some compelling evidence that this is where horses were first domesticated. But, you know, the take-home message is they, it was somewhere in this Eurasia area uh, on the plains of Asia and, and um, Eastern Europe where horses were first thought to be domesticated. Now, why should we domesticate these animals? And, the, you know, the obvious answer is it's fun, but you can jump on the back of them. You can go a lot faster than, than we can run. You can go further. And, you know, early on, this probably gave, you know, these early hunters a huge advantage you know, being able to run down prey and, and, and get them. And then here's an earlier, you know, another cave drawing, you know, over 5,000 years ago showing, you know, a man on the back of a horse. And then as, you know, we, we get more developed, uh, you, you know, there's more evidence of horses being used in different ways, you know, pulling chariots, starting to see them in agriculture. They were, they were still being raised in many parts of the world as meat but also, you know, beasts of burden, you know, pulling carts, pulling chariots, stuff like that. And they really make a, a, a huge impact during the Bronze Age. So we're looking at, you know, 3,000 to 1,000 BCE. And, you know, again, talking about traveling distances, better agriculture, but also, you know, 
increasing trade, all of this resulting in better nutrition, you know, more advanced society, larger families. So again, horses are allowing us to have more people, us advance a lot quicker. So what other species on earth has done that? And, and there isn't, it, horses are it. They're, they're the most uh, uh, important in our own development. And then again, to see you know, how early man felt about these animals, we find it all, all in their artwork. This is White Horse Hill in England, the White Horse of Uffington. And you can see that is clearly a picture and it, it's you know, these, uh, this chalk outline of a horse. Now, just a couple other interesting tidbits. The first uh, evidence of use of saddles was the Assyrian cavalry, and here you can see in this picture, you know, showing showing that in you know a soft pad or blanket type doesn't have stirrups. So, you know, again, incredible horsemen back then, and women that they could ride these animals almost bareback. You know, now they started using blankets, soft pads. Then the wooden saddles started to be developed, the frame saddles that we see today, and then. The first evidence of stirrups actually dates to India, and it actually goes to these looped rope stirrups that they would put their toes in. So that's, you know, those were the early stirrups, and then the metal stirrups started developing uh, later, and I think China and then parts of Europe really started to, uh, to flourish with the stirrups. Now, the horse for thousands of years was, you know, critical to, to our own development, our daily lives. Everybody you know, pretty much had some sort of equid, whether it was a donkey or a horse or a mule or some other hybrid. And you, you use that to transport, you know, get around, go to the neighbor's house, you know, do the things that you did on your daily life. That all changed in the 20th century. And really the automobile was the major thing that changed it. And it, you know, I use the United States as kind of a, you know, a microcosm of what was probably going on globally too. And the, the, the horse population was about 26 million in 1915. And then after World War I, with the cavalry being you know, really ineffective, and automobiles you know, making more and more of a presence known, horses really started to, in popularity, decline to where in the 1960, you know, by 1960, there was maybe three million left uh, in the United States. So it's a huge, huge decrease. Now we know after 1960, we start to see this horse population increase in the United States to where we have over 10 million today. And I like to say people rediscovered the horse. You know, they, they, they found these animals, fell back in love with them. Yeah, we have a car, yeah, we have a motorcycle or a bicycle or whatever, but it's not the same as riding a horse. There's just something about it, you know, being out outdoors riding the back of an animal and that's what a lot of people have rediscovered and so we've seen this in the United States really take off and in other parts of the world. I mean South America, huge hotbed of horse activity and, and Asia and Europe so you know we're not alone here in the United States. A lot of people have, have rediscovered their passions for these animals and so we're really seeing it, it pick up uh, the pace. So in our next lecture we're going to kind of jump in and talk about different breeds you know, throughout the world, there, there's over 140 breeds, you know, of horses, and, and then we'll jump into, you know, breeds of donkeys and whatnot, but, you know, we're not going to be able to cover all of them, so we're going to take some snapshots here and there and kind of cover some of the big breeds in the world and, um, you know, go from there.